If you grew up watching Digimon as a kid, you also probably have fond memories of the anime where a group of kids on summer camp find themselves whisked away to a digital world where they meet Digimon and go on an epic adventure full of friendship and saving the digital world. The latest entry in the Digimon series, Digimon Survive, promised to take inspiration from this original story and does so with its roots based in a similar plot, but in a visual novel and tactical RPG forum that makes it fun for Digimon fans who have grown into RPG ones to relive this premise in a new way. I've only played a couple of hours with the experience thanks to Xenoblade Chronicles 3 coming out at the same time, but have enjoyed it enough to know I want to keep playing at some point, as this Digimon game seems like an interesting new twist on Digimon's original story and an intriguing new mystery in its own right with fun tactical gameplay that I hope to get to know more soon. One of the first things that left an impression on me in Digimon Survive was how its story plays out in a way that will likely appeal to visual novel fans as there's a generous amount of dialogue paired with its great art style that tells the story of this new digital mystery. The story starts off in the familiar location of Summer Camp, with new characters Takuma, Minoru, and Aoi trying to complete their camp tasks in spite of the mysterious natural disasters that have been happening around the area. This eventually sees them heading towards a mysterious shrine where they discover murals that might look familiar to Digimon fans, and also where they learn about the mystery of this area's gods who have been rumored to spirit children away, making the weather phenomenons happening along the way all the more creepy. As they go to leave, not only do they discover fellow students who are on the camp with them, they also begin to encounter what we know is Digimon that is where this digital adventure begins, where the story of our summer camp turned into a Digimon-filled journey begins that I'm excited to watch unfold. Before my time with Digimon Survive, I hadn't really considered the exploration part of it at all. I already knew it was a tactical RPG, but I didn't think if there would be running around or not, which it turns out there isn't, in place of an exploration that feels sort of like Danganronpa but without the first person movement. Between events and dialogue, instead of walking around, you explore areas by clicking things, which can involve clicking on characters to talk to them, or things on the screen that may reveal interesting details, with a red exclamation mark meaning an action will progress the story that will help you choose the order you want to talk to people wisely. Clicking on these things usually leads to dialogue, whether it be descriptions or new plot, and it can also lead to choices that affect how close you become to certain characters, and also some personality traits that I'm pretty curious about. Choices in conversations sometimes triggered a moral, wrathful, or harmony stat to be earned, and according to the tutorial menu, these may influence what Takuma's main Digimon will grow into. I'm not really being careful with these choices at the moment, but I am curious to see what kind of effect they'll have have both on Digimon and the story, so that'll be something I'll be keeping an eye on as I keep going forward, and I wonder if its results will make me change the way I choose dialogue choices as I keep playing. I'm also hoping to see more of its battles as I play its story, as so far in its first two hours, I've only played with one outside of tutorials, and it's still in the very basic stages of battles that has me hoping there's more to it. So far, it's been a fairly standard tactical system in a good way, with there being directional mechanics in place to influence how hard attacks hit at certain angles and well-sized fields to take advantage of that you can use to avoid attacks and gain the upper hand if you consider the range of effects wisely. As a Digimon fan, my eyes are naturally falling towards the evolved part of the menu, although I think it's too early for that just yet, but it has been cool to see familiar attacks like Pepper Breath be unleashed by my favorite Digimon that has it feeling faithful to the series, and even the slightly chibi look of characters on the battlefields remind me of the old Tamagotchi-style Digimon that, intentionally or not, keeps that nostalgic part alive in the this new type of Digimon battle, so I'm looking forward to playing it more to see what it can really do, especially with more Digimon on the field. In any case, its exploration and battle mechanics are definitely unique, especially for a Digimon game, and since I enjoy other games with similar mechanics, I like the look of them here so far, but I also clearly have more to see in its world that has me excited to see everything unfold when I get back to it. I'm not sure when that will be, but my short time with it does have me hoping it'll be sooner rather than later, as I like this interesting tactical visual novel cross-adventure game feeling so far is something we haven't seen from the Digimon series before and is a nostalgic new Digimon game that I'm looking forward to playing. 
Digimon Survive gave me the Digimon nostalgia I wanted and more as it brings in unique exploration mechanics that add something new to the series. I like how it's using every part of Digimon from its premise to its character types in a new way, complete with a visual novel feeling story and that tactical gameplay to also add new things to the world of Digimon games and with what sounds like it will build up to be an interesting mystery to play through. It also managed to remind me in its first chapter how sweet Digimon are too, with its first Digimon and human friendship being very touching to watch grow, and if there's more of this in the story, I think it'll hit a lot of the beats that are why I fell in love with it in the first place, and as a person who seeks out these kinds of touching events, I can't wait to keep playing more and hopefully see more of these adorable creatures and these new characters together. All in all, Digimon Survive's first couple of hours did a good job at getting me curious enough to want more, so I hope those who chose it as their main game for now are enjoying the rest of it too, and for everyone else who's putting it on the pile for now, I hope we can all enjoy this story that the Digimon team worked very hard on soon, and I'm excited for the nostalgia it'll surely bring. Thank you for watching this video, let me know in the comments below if you've tried Digimon Survive and what you think of it so far. You can like and share this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel for more JRPG content like this, and ring that bell to get notifications on whenever I post so you don't miss a thing. You can check out more videos here, and you can find me on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all at JRPG Jungle. Links to those will be in the description below, and until next time, thank you, bye!